Hi, this is Mike from Microsoft Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we'll be taking a look at a thermal compound from our friends over at Olzai. This is the T9 Plus Platinum. Question is, is it actually any good? Keep watching to find out. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at the Olzai T9 Plus Platinum. This is a new thermal compound from the guys over at Olzai. Now this, in full disclosure, has been sent to us free of charge for review purposes. If you're trying to buy this actually in the shops, you'll find at the moment in the UK, somewhere around the 10 pounds for a two gram packet. In the US, somewhere around about 9.99 in terms of dollars. So similar sort of pricing. Generally here in the UK with some Olzai products, we do tend to spend a little bit more on the products US customers do seem to get a slightly better deal, so do bear that in mind. Uh, they also do a load of other products as well, which uh, we are in the process of checking out, and we have seen already. Uh, there's the M90 cooler, which you can check out up here, which was kindly sent to us by Ugly Bob, so thank you very much, Bob. You can check out for yourself. A very unusual cooler. But anyway, I'm digressing, so let's take a look at what we get with the T9+. Plus. So this is essentially what you would refer to as a premium paste. So you get your generic pastes, um, the cheap and cheerfuls, you get massive syringes, on places like eBay, Amazon, etc., They don't cost a great deal. They get the job done, kind of, but they're not brilliant and they don't last very long. What we get with premium pace are things like we get much better curing or no curing at all. So literally you put it on, it's ready to go straight away. Also as well with this particular one, it's a silicon base. So that means there's a couple of actual plus points that come out of that. It's gonna be non-conductive. So if you want to, you can spread it out all over the place and it's not gonna cause any short circuits. Obviously, don't do that, it's not recommended, and also it's a terrible waste of product. But certainly if you do get accidentally get it onto uh, any surface-minted capacitors, diodes, etc., it isn't gonna cause any issues with short circuits, that kind of stuff. So open dies, graphics cards, that kind of thing, absolutely fine for. Also, because again, silicon-based, very easy to apply, very easy to spread. It does actually come with a spreader included as well in the kit. So if you don't wanna use your fingers or whatever paste application methods you may prefer, you can just use the spatula, which actually I find to be a very good way of doing it to get a very nice thin and even coating on your processor. Other good thing about it being silicon based is again, like I said, easy to apply. It's easy to remove. It's not really thick and gloopy. Doesn't really glue the actual CPU cooler to the processor. So it's relatively easy to remove after as well, which I've also found out. And also it is uh, kind of not very viscous. So once you put it on, it's not gonna drip or drop or melt, or when it gets hot, it's not gonna change consistency. It basically stays the same all the way through the temperature ranges. And speaking of temperature ranges, we should look at some of the temperatures that we recorded. Now in today's video, I use my Ryzen 5 3600 with precision boost enabled. So allowing the processor to clock up where it wanted to or where it was able to due to the thermal loads. We tested using Cinebench R23 loop test for around about 10 minutes. And we also took a high and a low reading of the temperatures with various pace. Now we have actually tested this against some of the market leaders here in uh, the United Kingdom. Pretty much most people, if you ask around, a lot of people will end up using either MX4 or the new MX5. Those that aren't sure, if you're using some cheap stuff, I've included that as well as a reference. So we've only got four actual pace that we're comparing it against, but I figured if we compare this against to the market leader, then it's gonna give you a good idea whether it's actually worth it or not. So let's head straight into those figures. Okay, so let's take a look at the results first of all. So first of all, we're looking at the Arctic MX4. Now MX4 in Cinemage R23 scored 9,373 points. So that's an excellent start in place. We then replaced the paste and put on some of Arctic's newer version, which is a slightly increased or improved formula. And that scored 9,415 points. Then just to kind of switch gears a little bit, I went with some of the uh, the really cheap and cheerful stuff. So this is the HCIB, which is uh, like a generic paste. That didn't do particularly well at all, coming in with a score of only 9,291. But what was very interesting to see with new Olzai's T9 Plus Platinum, we did get a score. I was expecting it actually to beat MX4 and MX5, but sadly it came in just below MX5s and we've got a score of 9,388 points. So done very well. Again, beating MX4 is no mean feat anyway. MX4 is basically market leader for a good reason because it's cheap and it works very well and you get very good results for it. So doing pretty well so far. So let's take a look at the low and the high temperatures. 
Again, from the left, we've got the Arctic MX-4. So our lowest recorded temperature was 29.8 degrees Celsius. This is in a 23 degrees Celsius room. So 29.8 is what we got with MX-4. We're looking at MX-5, we've got a slight reduction there. So we've got 29.4. Again, pretty much within margin of error, we're looking at points of a degree. So yeah, there is easy fluctuations that could have been happening in the room, etc. Although I have done my best to try and keep it as stable as possible. Moving on to the HCIB paste. So yeah, this didn't do as well. We're looking at almost a degree hotter in most instances. So that is 30.9. Now a lot of this is actually down to the cooler we're using. We are actually using a 360 mil AIO cooler. So obviously that is gonna take away the majority of the thermal load. What we're seeing here is the small incremental details in the differences between the paste, whereas the cooler's done a fantastic job regardless. So let's take a look and see what the T9 Plus did. And in this regard, actually come in as the best particular paste. I actually got the lowest result. Now this is a very, very marginal. It is 29.3 degrees Celsius. So we're 0.1 of a degree. It is a win, but yeah, definitely within margin of error. When you're looking at a 10th of a degree, that's very, very easy with a fluctuation. But this test is about recorded information that we've received rather than just me saying, well, yes, this is good or this isn't. So that is the result we've got. I can't change it. So that's all well and good. Low temperatures are excellent. We would like to see a low temperature, especially in idle. It's always a nice thing to see. But the more important thing is what is it like under load? So as you've obviously seen already from the graphs, we've got a clear winner here and we've got some clear losers. Now looking at the losers, we've got the HCIB, which came in last place at 68.4 degrees Celsius. So that was the worst one. The fan speeds, actually, I should mention this for the actual cooler, the 360 mil AIO, I've used a normal profile, which I use every day on my rig. So we're looking at 40% fan speed at 40 degrees, 60% fan speed at 60 degrees, and at 70 degrees Celsius, we are looking at 100%. So these are getting towards that 100% mark. So they're pretty good at accurate indication of what real world use is going to be like. Okay, so next up, we're going to be looking at those in joint second place. Yes, there is a tie, believe it or not, for some of them. So we're looking at Arctic's MX-4 and also the Ozai T9 Plus, which both of them done a very good job, but we did see a temperature of 65.5 degrees Celsius. So clearly in this particular section, there was a winner, which was Arctic's MX-5, which came in an absolute slither less at 65.3 degrees Celsius. So that's a very, very minute difference. Now, this could have been, well, this could have been very different. I did actually get to the point where I was about to put the information into the spreadsheet. And at the time of me actually going to type it in, because I thought the test was over, we were looking at 65 degrees bang on for the T9 plus, at which point it would have won the test. Unfortunately, there was a spike. So as we went between one run of Cinebench to the next run, it did actually spike up and I was absolutely gutted. I really wanted this to be the uh, the overall winner. It's always nice to have a product come through and it to be better than things you've used before. Certainly it was easier to use. The, uh, the application method and that was absolutely brilliant. But sadly, I do have to do the testing as I've done fairly between the other groups in this test or the other items in this test. So we did have to have a cutoff point, although the test did run slightly over after the alarm bell went off. Yeah, that was very, very unfortunate. So uh, and sadly, the Ozai T9 Plus Platinum come within an absolute gnat's whisker of winning this particular round. But sadly, yeah, it's uh, just got pipped right there at the very end. So anyway, that is the results. Overall, I would say if you are looking for a thermal paste, depending where you are and what the pricing is like, that is ultimately what it's going to come down to. This, like I said, at the moment in the UK, somewhere around about the £10 mark for a two gram syringe. Arctic do some really good deals. I would love for Olsai to be able to bring this price down just a little bit more, maybe down to something like 6 99 or 7 99 just so there's a clear difference between the price of this and obviously the market leaders, MX4, MX5, and obviously other pace on the market, which all seem to be around a similar sort of price point at this kind of point in the market. So yeah, overall, excellent product, can't fault it. There's nothing which I would actually say, no, don't use it, it's horrible, or it doesn't perform well. It certainly performs well. It's very easy to apply, very easy to remove due to that silicon based formula. It does very well, but I would like to see it a little bit cheaper if I'm completely honest with you. So let me know what you think about this one in the comments section below, and actually better still, grab some from the links in the video description and try it for yourself. And let me know what your thoughts are 
let me see your temperatures in those comment section below. I'll be really interested to see what your results are like compared with mine. So that's going to wrap this one up. Thanks again to Oldsley for sending this for review purposes. We do appreciate it. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully, we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.